So I don't do a top 10 or a top five or anything of that nature. I have one tier. I get straight to the meat and bones. There are three teams in the NFL that are just playing hands down, head and shoulders above everyone else. There are teams that are not in my top three that are right there, like the LA Rams. They're right there. You know, they're not in the top three, but they're right there. You know, the Colts are right there. Then maybe a little further out, like the Packers, the Cardinals, Titans, Ravens, Bucks. I'm not saying any one of those teams could not compete and win a Super Bowl simply because they're not in the top three. That's not what I'm saying at all. This is the NFL. The difference between the NFL and basketball is in the NFL, the team that's not better can move on, right? In the NFL, it, or excuse me, in basketball, it's the best out of seven. You usually find out who the better team is. But in the NFL, it's just one game, one interception, one fumble, one bad call can change the entire outcome of a game. That's why we're so vested in the NFL. That's why each game matters so much because it's not diluted, right? You have a ton of games in, in baseball. You have a ton of games in basketball. But in football, there's 16 games and every single game matters. That's what makes the NFL so beautiful. And that's why we watch every game every weekend with intensity because we know that game matters. It matters. But there's three teams right now, in my opinion, that are just playing head and shoulders above everyone else. Saints, Steelers, Chiefs. Or Chiefs, Steelers, Saints. Or Steelers, Chiefs, Saints. Whatever order you want to put them in. There's no particular order. I'm sure if you're a Saints fan, you're going to say Saints number one. If you're a Chiefs fan, you're going to say Chiefs number one. And if you're a Steelers fan, you're going to say Steelers number one. I got no problem with whatever order you want to put them in. These are the three teams, in my opinion, who have played head and shoulders above everyone else. They're just hitting their stride at the right moment. They're just playing together at the right moment. And in the NFL, timing is everything right? You want to hit your stride right before the playoffs begin. You want to come together collectively as a team right before the playoffs start. You want to be playing your best football right before the playoffs start. Those are the teams that succeed. Those are the teams that win. I talk about it in another video. It's called a family. If you can become a family, you are unbeatable. A family does not share their problems with everyone else. They keep their problems internally. All the problems in the locker room, you know, the good teams, they don't let the media find out about it. All the problems between the coaches and the players, they don't let the media find out about it. They don't let the fans find out about it. They take care of it internally because when they present themselves to the world, they are united front. They are one. They are a team that is in harmony. They are a team that is in 100% continuity. There's none of this division stuff. You don't win Super Bowls if you are divided. A house divided cannot stand. And the good teams become a family. Because when you're a family and you step out on that football field, you'll die for each other. You'll lay it out for each other. You'll give everything you got for the W. And those are the teams that win. Those are the teams that compete for a Super Bowl. And right now, when I, I look at the NFL, I see three teams playing collectively as a family. Steelers, Saints, Chiefs. Let's talk about the Saints first. This Saints team, especially over the last couple weeks, man, impressive. Last three games, their defense has given up a little less than eight and a half points per game. One of those games was against the Falcons, who had won three out of their last four games. One of those games was against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And say whatever you want about the Bucs. In my opinion, they're still a good team. Say whatever you want. They lost to Chicago by one point. They lost to the Rams by a field goal. That game could have gone either way. There's only one team that's really blown them out, the Saints. Twice, by the way. The other two losses, the Bucs have one point to Chicago. They could have actually won that game three points to the Rams, they could have actually won that game too. There's only one team that has truly blown the Bucks out and just hand, handily beat them, and that's the, uh, the New Orleans Saints. Their defense, eight and a half points the last three games. 13 sacks over the last three games. 
They've gotten after the other quarterback 13 times in three games, eight against the Falcons. They got to Matt Ryan eight times. Their defense has allowed one touchdown in the last three games. Everyone wants to talk about Cameron Jordan. What about Trey Hendrickson? Leads the NFL right now with nine and a half sacks. This, this defense is, is really coming together and starting to play strong. On the year right now, the Saints have 32 sacks, tied for second in the NFL. Right now, they're ranked second against the run in the NFL. And they didn't start this way. Keep in mind, it didn't start this way, but it's coming into this way. In other words, they're hitting their stride right at the right time. Drew Brees... You know, and I was one of the ones that was saying this, didn't look the same, and he still doesn't. He doesn't look like the Drew Brees of old who was slinging the ball downfield. He's altered his game a little bit, but hey, Jordan did that. You know, Jordan stopped attacking the rim, and he developed a fadeaway, and it worked well for him. Went to six finals, won all of them, never played a game seven. Drew Brees is looking really good. Number one in the NFL in completion percentage, 73.5. Third in the NFL in QBR rating. 81.9. Fourth in the NFL in passer rating, 110. The results speak for themselves. Drew Brees is doing something right. The New Orleans offense is doing something right. Alvin Kamara leads the Saints in receiving yards. He has over, I want to say a little under 1,200 yards from the line of scrimmage. Uh, Receiving yards and rushing yards. I want to say he has a combined 12 touchdowns on the season, receiving and rushing touchdowns. He's the Saints' leading receiver, and that, a lot of that has to do because Michael Thomas has been injured all year. Then you look at their weapons. Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, this team is loaded, and it's hit its stride right at the right time. Can I see this compete, uh, team compete for a Super Bowl? Absolutely. Now, I, I, when I do my three teams, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about all the good things, and I'm going to talk about one thing that worries me. And here's what worries me about the Saints. I've seen this before, and I'm not trying to be a negative. I'm not trying to be a hater. It's just I've seen this before. The Saints have dominated their division for 10 years. For the last 10 years, since they won their last Super Bowl, I think it was in 2010, if my memory serves me correct. Since 2010, they dominate their division every year. Last three years in a row, they've won their division handily, not even close, right? They, they look better than everyone else every year. Every year, this team looks good. Do you know how many Super Bowls they've played in in the last 10 years? Zero. Do you know how many Super Bowls they've won? Zero. Do you know how many NFC Championship games they have won? Still zero. That's my only knock against this team. Is that, And I'm sure Saints fans would agree with me that the team we see right now in the regular season, that's the team we also need to see in the postseason. However, if this Saints team can play like the way they're playing now in the postseason, watch out because they can beat anyone. With that offense and that defense, this team is for real. How about the Pittsburgh Steelers? Big Ben. Big Ben is currently fifth in the NFL in touchdown passes at 24 touchdowns on the year. 24 touchdowns on the year. And unlike Aaron Rodgers, who is Devontae Adams dependent. In other words, Aaron Rodgers is going to go to Devontae Adams on pretty much every big down. Big Ben is spreading the wealth around. And this drives defenses and defensive coordinators nuts. In other words, Big Ben's throwing touchdowns to everyone. Chase Claypool, eight touchdowns on the air. Juju Smith-Schuster, five touchdowns on the air. Deontay Johnson, four touchdowns on the air. Eric Ebron, four touchdowns on the air. James Washington, three touchdowns on the air. And he's probably the fifth option in the progression. How about their running back, James Conner, currently eighth in rushing yards in the NFL. And if my memory serves me correct, he has five rushing touchdowns on the year. I mean, this offense is good. Big Ben's only been sacked 10 times this year. And it's not because he's agile and he moves well in the pocket like Patrick Mahomes. It's just he has a really stacked offensive line and they can protect him. That's the kind of offensive line Tom Brady needs. I mean, they protecting Big Ben. They are protecting their quarterback. This offense is legit. But as good as this offense is, it's their defense that has been leading them. Right now, the Steelers are the number one scoring defense in the NFL at a little under 18 points per game. They're number one in takeaways at 21 takeaways for the year. They're number one in QB sacks at 38 sacks on the year. They are definitely right now ranked by pro football focus 
the number one defensive team in the NFL, and everyone gets involved. T.J. Watt, uh, nine sacks on the year. Bud Dupree, eight sacks on the year. Stephon Tuitt, seven sacks on the year. This team is legit. This is what they've done in their last three games. They're allowing a little under 11 and a half points per game. They have six sacks on the quarterback. 18 and a half tackles for a loss. That means they're getting to the other team behind the line of scrimmage and creating havoc. Five interceptions in the last three games, four fumbles, three recovered, and Big Ben, nine touchdowns in the last three games. Remember timing, hitting your stride right before the postseason? This is what the Steelers are doing. This is why they just blew the Jaguars away. They blew them away. It wasn't even close. They were sending a message to the NFL that we're legit, we're real, and we're here to compete for a Super Bowl. Kansas City Chiefs. Right now, they are the number one scoring offense in the NFL, scoring over 32 points per game. Patrick Mahomes, 3,035 passing yards year-to-date. That's first in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes, 27 touchdowns year-to-date, which is third in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes, QBR rating of 85.3, which is first in the NFL, and a passer rating of 114, which is second in the NFL. There is no quarterback in the National Football League that is as good as Patrick Mahomes. And look at his weapons. Mercole Hardman, Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill has 10 touchdowns on the year, which is second in the NFL. How about Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in football? Who did Patrick Mahomes throw the game-winning touchdown pass to in the Raider game? Travis Kelsey. Right now, Travis Kelsey is the only tight end in the top 20 in receiving yards in the NFL. Not just top 20, top 10, not just top 10, top 5. As a matter of fact, he is third in receiving yards in the NFL year to date. He's the only tight end in the top 20, and he's third in receiving yards. And then they got Clyde Edwards Hilaire, the rookie uh, running back. He's seventh in the NFL in rushing yards. And why? Because they have an insane offensive line. Patrick Mahomes has only been sacked 12 times this year. Not only can Patrick Mahomes throw the ball downfield, not only can he throw off his back foot, not only does he have an insane football IQ, but he's protected too with those weapons. I keep hearing how good the KC defense is, and it has its bright spots. They're, they're seventh in scoring defense. They're fifth in, in takeaways. They're 19th in QB sacks. I mean, they have their bright spots, but let's be real. It's the KC offense that makes this team unbeatable. There's only one way you beat Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. You make sure he's on the sideline at the end of the game. When the Patriots beat the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, it was because KC lost a coin toss, and Tom Brady went down and scored the game-winning touchdown. That's the only way you beat Patrick Mahomes, is you need to leave him on the sideline, and you need to have the ball in your hand at the end of the game. So there it is. Those are my top three teams that I feel are the best three teams in football year to date. The Saints, Steelers, and Chiefs. Hey everyone, thank you for watching SP Sports today. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. This way you are notified when we post new videos. Also, if you have a moment, leave a comment and check out our other videos.